met Polly. Polly is a very, very long time ago, 1968. My husband Bill was started to make documentary films, and although this wasn't going to be a documentary film, it was going to be a film. We were able to use two teenage elephants that Daphne and David Sheldrick had in Savo National Park. They were orphans, and we needed a young one for the film. And David Sheldrick said they've just captured a little elephant from the wild as a gift to London Zoo. So we went to Nairobi and there was this little elephant, absolutely distraught, as you can imagine, bashing itself against the side of his pen. And I said to David, I remember distinctly, saying, um, how could we ever use her poor little thing? I mean, she's so terrified. He said, if I could have her for a couple of days, I think I could calm her and reassure her, and you will be able to use her in the film. And she became the most gentle, adorable, sweet, trusting little elephant that I certainly have ever met. Poli Poli was her name, and that means slowly, slowly in Swahili. She became the star of our film, An Elephant Called Slowly. Come the end of filming, which took six weeks, um, we asked if we could buy her and give her to the Sheldricks so that she could join the little group. And they said, yes, yes, you can buy her, but we'll have to capture another baby. It was absolutely agonizing. I can't tell you, we were distraught because the thought of this little friend being betrayed, as we felt, by us, and um, being sent to London Zoo was just the worst thing in the world. However, we could not allow another little one to be torn from its family, not only for the sake of that little individual, but the sake of the family, because there's such a fantastic family relationship that elephants had. Twelve years later, we had a letter from Daphne Sheldrick saying she'd heard that something might happen to Poli Poli at London Zoo, and could we go and find out? That's when we sprang into action, and I found an organisation, a, a group in South Africa who had a reserve and would love to have taken her there and teach her to, to be free again, to join the wild herd. Unfortunately, the zoo would not agree, but they did say they would send her to Whipsnade where there were elephants, and so come the day of the move, compromise though it was, day came and they shut the door. Unfortunately, they kept her standing for many, many, many hours and she collapsed. When Bill and I went to London Zoo the second time and we did manage to see her and she came and touched our hands, probably one of the most agonizing moments I can remember because mixed up with the joy of memories of being with her in Africa and our wonderful unique friendship with her, I've never really lost that terrible sense of guilt that we let her down. And I know that she would understand in a way because she would not want another little elephant to be taken from its family. She would understand. Um, and there are people who understand that. But that's why when I see London Zoo's elephant enclosure empty of elephants, that is for me the most wonderful thing to see I went there last year and it's got no elephants and I hope it never, never will again. That should be her legacy.